So the crank pin is finally back from hardening and grinding. All that's left to do is give it a quick check over with my own micrometer to confirm the dimensions so I can achieve the correct press fit and then grind off the driving dog end and then machine off the small nub for the live center and what's left of the driving dog. And I have just the perfect Chinesium carbide insert to do this. So let's see how we go. And it measures bang on 23.10. Obviously, when I zeroed the mic, it was just hair over, and I couldn't be bothered dicking around and re zeroing the mic. So, what you're looking at is some wet and dry sandpaper wrapped around a file, and I'm just doing some light strokes so I don't tear the sandpaper up in one spot. So instead of working out the balance factor correctly, I decided to go with the old Allen Millyard approach. I'm just gonna lob off what isn't the counterweight with an angle grinder, and then clean her up with some hand files and a paddle wheel and see how we go. Let's not worry about the math and science involved. And as you can see, the one mil cutoff disc in the angle grinder makes short work of the crankshaft. This is what we ended up with. In my honest opinion, it looks pretty shit. And truing it up with a file and an angle grinder reeked of effort. And because I have a few tools and I'm inherently lazy, I decided it was time to utilize the mill. So I went inside and took some calipers with me and the crank wheel. I measured up the rough dimensions of the crank and then removed the material I wanted and ended up with this. From here, I went into the cam side of Fusion and programmed removing the rest of the material and contouring it so the whole thing was symmetrical. So there was only one way I was going to be able to hold this on the mill. So I decided to whip the three jaw chuck off the lathe, place it on the table, hold it down with some finger clamps, and then drop the crank wheel into the chuck. From there I would align the crank wheel with the x-axis by placing a 1-2-3 block along the counterweight and then roughly square it up with the edge of the table. From there I confirmed where everything was with the edge finder and then once I was happy chucked in my 6mm end mill, touched it off to set the zero and then all that was left to do was start machining. So I was pretty hesitant with this as the setup wasn't ideal with three jaws only gripping the part by about 15, maybe 20 mils tops of that. So there was a little bit of chatter, so I did have to manually muck around with the RPM and the feed rate in the Mac 3 as when I was doing the contours, there was quite a bit of chatter, although turning the feed rate down to about 60% seemed to solve this.
this is what the crank looked like straight off the mill. So it was pretty much an exact repeat for the other half, the one I started with the grinder. And it looked like this when it was set up. That was the program I showed you before as well, as I didn't need to remove all of the material. So what you'll notice is a little bit of chatter, although I wouldn't really stress about this. I don't think anyone's going to see it, seeing as it's inside the engine, and I don't think it's going to affect the functionality at all. But I believe it's from where I was holding the crank, which, come to think of it now, looks more like probably 10 mils of grip with a three-jaw chuck, which is less than ideal. Although you can see the second one came out a lot better when I slowed the feeds down even more. But worries. Next up, I just had to quickly attack both the crank wheels with a fairly fine file. This was to remove any sharp burrs, as I would be handling them quite a bit. And just in case any of these burrs decided to loosen themselves up and become pieces of debris swimming around in the engine. So. Now I'm going to chuck the crank pin in the lathe and try to remove this little nub off the end and we'll see if we can take it off with my Chinese carbides. Allegedly this has been hardened to 63-64 Rockwell hardness with a fairly decent case depth. And it appears to me that insert made short work of the hardened steel, which was far easier than grinding that off and then cleaning it up. But we all know there is no way my rubbish part off blades are going to cut through the piece for the driving dog. So I decided I'll get the one mil cutoff disc again and the battery grinder and at least cut this piece off and then finish it up in the lathe. So here it is, fresh off the lathe, and it turns out the carbide insert worked a treat. The plan from here is to align this little hole here with this hole. I've already cleaned all of the parts ready for assembly. So this end hole here will need blocking. I'll do this after I've pressed the crank together. And then I will put in a small aluminium slug and then center punch around the edge to lock it in. So what I did next was take one of the crank wheels and the pin over to the press I scored off Facebook Marketplace. And then press the pin into the crank web. And here you'll be able to see the small vivid mark I used to align the hole on the pin with the hole in the crank wheel. So when it came time to press on the other half, I used an engineer's square to roughly align the ends and then gave them a light squeeze in the vise and got them as close to true as possible. And it's actually pretty close, it's within half a mil although that's using the centers and I was going to draw it up using these centers on the lathe but as you can see they've been given a bit of a hiding someone's decided to take a hammer to them probably trying to remove the flywheel at some stage so I don't trust them so what I decided to do was buy some v-blocks which caused one of the many delays in the making of this video so 
These are the bad boys I went ahead and bought. They're from Machinery House. They were on sale. They're about 75 bucks. And they are allegedly cast iron. And they are matched and ground. And they've even got nice little stamp marks on them. And they're actually fairly substantial looking. So these will be used for... I'm sure many more projects in the future. I also have the knurling tool, which I went ahead and bought. Although I will leave it in its plastic packaging until I find a project for it later on, but I'm sure it will come in handy. And it's not what you're thinking. I didn't ring those together. They were just stuck together with a light film of oil. So because the crank is too large in diameter, I had to prop up the V-blocks on my I would say precision ground, but let's just go with ground one, two, three blocks, courtesy of AliExpress. From there, I had to whip out the dial indicator and figure out what I was working with. So it's not perfect, seeing as I haven't clamped the V-blocks, keeping them in one spot, but I can get a pretty good idea of where the high and low spots are. The crank webs were actually pinched quite a bit and I didn't get it on camera but what I did was get a very short M10 nut and bolt and use it like a jacking screw to spread the crank wheels. From there I gave it a few sharp whacks with a copper hammer and that brought everything to within about 0.02 millimeters of total running. The next thing to do was check the rod clearance with the feeler gauges. So it's three times what the Honda manual specifies, which is 025 millimeters. although this sounds about right, seeing as there's two rods, a bit more room for heating and expansion, and yeah, we'll see how we go. But if somebody has some good information for me, definitely I'm all ears. And I just happen to have this perfect wee box sitting there from when I did my motocross crank rebuild. So this will be a nice safe place to store this until it comes time to assemble the engine. <laughs>